bloody hell, I thought my arm was loud. Uh, yeah, so uh, welcome to another episode of Lem Redlines. Um, been quite a few months without actually going for a ride, obviously due to this corona nonsense. So, uh, yeah, the bike's been laid up for about end of February, really. Uh, I took it quite serious. You know, it is a, um, a serious thing. It's a global pandemic. So I didn't want to go out, potentially have an accident, and then put undue pressure on the NHS. So I've been good. Uh, and haven't ridden for about two months so yesterday I was like well the lockdown is kind of being relaxed a little so I'm going to get out and it occurred to me I've never done a full review on my own bike so today's going to be a bit of a review on the bike and um, what I've done to it any issues that I've had a buying guide um, you know tips for the bike really so as most of you know if you've tuned into my channel it's a 2015 S1000RR it's the sport edition so it comes with the extras of a down blipper heater grips and no pillion seat which is strange to me that you you pay more for less um, but yeah so no pillion seat and then you uh, basically decommission uh, the rear pegs which can obviously be added on at any other time so I've had the bike about two years um, in that time I've added a few bits to it as you may have seen on modification monthly um, the most notable bits obviously the front screen cosmetic all the aluminous yellow graphics that you can see again they're all um, added on by me and as far as functional modifications go obviously got the Acropovic end can I've also got the full Acropovic um, headers all the way back to the end can and obviously with that I need a power commander so I've got that I've got the uh, Sprint uh, air filter, the one between kind of race and road use, um, so it allows a lot more, a lot more uh, airflow, giving me greater power. And obviously, I've had it all set up on the dyno and achieved uh, a really respectable figure of 193 at the rear wheel. So, as far as power goes, um, the standard bike I think comes with 199 out of the factory, which will give you about 183 at the wheel. So I've made 193 at the wheel, which means I've got a 10 horsepower uh, increase at the rear wheel. And once you equate that to, to engine horsepower, the bike's probably running roughly about 210, maybe 215 horsepower at the engine, which puts it in the bracket of all the modern uh, super bikes because this is a generation three model. The newer bike, the S1000RR, which has got the um, same headlights not this um, asymmetrical uh, configuration so basically it's up there power wise of all the modern bikes and as far as uh, extras go I'll, I'll talk about them when we go on a little ride but in my opinion even though this is a five-year-old bike it's still very much up there and I've basically spent the money to get the power up a little bit more so I'm not getting left behind in the whole you know power race bit of a, a, a willy waggling contest really because most of the time you can't use this sort of power on the road unless you go to the Isle of Man of course and uh, sadly sadly that hasn't gone ahead this year even though I was all booked up and ready to go so in this weather that is where I should be now but, but sadly it wasn't to be Todd's law really isn't it that the weather's like this Uh, as far as modifications go I think I've, I've pretty much covered that there's, there's many power mods a few cosmetics I've got the uh, Evotech levers as well um, which are stubbies not to everyone's taste but I kind of like them they're on the bike when I got them and I've got the Evotech uh, crash protectors just in case the worst happens so as I said I've had the bike for about two years now uh, I think I'm used to all the the bells and the whistles on it it's got a ton of rider modes on it so you have uh, a wet I think it's the first one which I've never used then you've got uh, sport then race and then slick so obviously progressively as you go up them increments of driving modes it's a more aggressive machine it doles down the ABS because it has ABS it doles down the anti-wheelie because it has anti-wheelie doles down the traction control and the uh, dynamic stability control I think is what it's called so it dulls it down until you get to slick 
and then it's literally as aggressive as the bike will go there's also a user mode which uh, you can only engage when you've got a special plug that you have to put into the ECU that comes with the bike anyway so you put that in and that enables you to uh, activate user mode and I think slick mode as well but user mode is the one I'm most interested in it enables you to basically customize all of the settings with regards to uh, the ABS uh, the uh, firmness of the suspension um, the aggressiveness of the throttle um, an abundance of, of, of features I'm no you know race expert but I played around with it watched a few YouTube videos and I think I've got the user mode set up just just nicely so I don't know if you can see that but you can see here it says user and obviously I can toggle through them on the go to put it into any mode that I like so if it is raining or I've got a pillion I do then tend to put it in sport just because I'm not going too mental and uh, yeah the, 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 the user modes really make a difference to the bike they enable you to have some fun when you want to have some fun when you can absolutely go for it specifically when you're in the Isle of Man and uh, for when you're just you know going down some back roads like this you can have it in a less aggressive mode you know you don't want to get on the throttle and the front starts coming up and, and catches you out maybe obviously suspension in user mode I've customised to have it as soft as possible but it's still rock hard um, that is the one uh, little niggle I've got with a the bike there's not many but yeah even the softest um, suspension is rock hard so you go over any of these bumps on these back roads it is uh, it's going to kick you out your seat a little bit I'm afraid my old ZX10 was a little bit softer so it's a little bit more forgiving on these back roads so you could you know go over bumps with a little bit of lean and it, it didn't you know make your bum pinch whereas this does so um, that's the only little uh, gripe I've got with the bike is that you can't dull down the suspension enough to make it a bit more usable on these back B roads so as far as living with the bikes go I've just covered a bit about the firmness of the suspension but you soon get used to it you soon uh, become very wary of uneven surfaces or potholes or anything like that that can de destabilize the bike in the corners but I'll be honest I've had a couple of them bum clenching moments and the bike hasn't really come close to, to chucking me off uh, so uh, yeah even though I'm mindful of how firm the ride is and and how dangerous it could be in some of the, the bumpier roads at speed it hasn't really uh, put me in that situation so again I can only give the bike credit I don't know whether that's electronics keeping me on the road God knows but most of the time I, I ride it in user mode with everything like max aggressive with the exception of the suspension which I try to soften down a little bit as far as sort of problems go with the bike well I've, I've owned it for nearly two years now and I haven't really had any issues the only issue that I did have was the quick shifter uh, uh, sorry down blipper as well wasn't activating correctly and, and what it turned out to be is there's a uh, there's like a little switch inside this unit here and underneath there there's like a little button that that switch presses onto now that's like that little switch is just a metal prong and that metal prong they've got bent out of shape with use and all you had to do was get underneath this unit see the little metal prong that engages the button and bend that metal prong back on itself a little bit just so it engages the little button that engages the down blipper and since then I've really had no problems um, I think there's a common issue on S1000s the uh, down blipper or the quick shifter um, doesn't engage properly I spoke to a couple of guys who got older gen models and they mentioned it and I gave them that tip they went away and done it with a screwdriver and um, all good yeah and no, it didn't, didn't happen again so that's the only real uh, I don't want to call it a manufacturing defect but that's the only issue I've ever had with this bike and um, apart from that I think I've had a nail in my in my tyre uh, last year's Isle of Man and again that was just the only issue that I ever had with a bike so as far as reliability goes you literally cannot go wrong it's got that well-renowned BMW build quality which uh, I wouldn't really know about because this is the first BMW I've ever owned so but people tell me they're reliable and um, my experiences of this bike is it has been very reliable 
as far as maintenance goes it's down to you how much you maintain your bike I think everyone says about 3,000 miles I will generally change the oil in my bike between two and three uh, especially if you ride it hard the oil will degrade a little bit quicker so I like to keep the oil nice and fresh in it and for the sake of 50 60 quid to keep the bike running tip top um, I change the oil myself as I've done a video on previously and yeah um, two to three thousand miles or between three to six months depending on what comes sooner normally it's the mileage that comes sooner as I do get about a bit but obviously recently not so much so living with a bike um, it's been a pleasure uh, absolutely now it's running more power it's probably as much power as I would ever want I have used it to commute to work uh, for a two to three hour ride there and back uh, it's not really the best commuting bike in the world as I said about the suspension um, the riding position is a bit hunched over get the uh, arm pump and saw hands and, and stuff like that which I think honestly if you ride the bike a bit more frequently your body will just get used to that and I've got a bug in my visor lovely sort him out oh mate get out yeah so yeah so if you're in the market to buy one of these in a minute I had a little look around recently and um, I think these are going roughly for um, you know for a high mileage one probably about eight grand for a good condition one really go on in mate you're obviously in a rush sweetheart and um, yeah for a low mileage one you're probably looking about about ten grand I paid I think was it twelve two years ago so as far as depreciation goes I mean it's the same with a lot of bikes they didn't depreciate like you'd think um, like cars so you know I've lost two grand in in two years maybe I probably could still get ten for this as it stands even though it's now an outdated model given that the uh, generation four is available and um, I'm not at a point yet where I'm interested in buying a new bike I'm deadly honest I just want to keep adding little bits to this because the best thing about having a bike that's been about for a few years is there's just a ton of bits out there that you can just add to it I've got some uh, little carbon fibre goodies coming soon um, that I've been wanting to buy for ages and uh, I was on their website the other day and I was like you know what I've done nothing for the last two months I'm gonna treat myself and get some little carbon bits so these are the sort of roads that you will find challenging when you're on this bike I don't know if you can see that while being kicked about a little bit at the minute the suspension is very firm but it's manageable there's a lot of electronics working in the background that will keep you on two wheels and um, yeah, it always fills you with confidence and I don't want to get overconfident but absolutely love this bike to pieces it's really been a step up from where I was on the old ZX10 oh it's so beautiful this weather and these roads you just can't touch them on much more at the minute other than the bloody coronavirus to go away that's uh, in the vein of everyone's lives here what have I got on the road, what is that? trees so you know bumpy, very bumpy but I'm respecting the bumps and just uh, not leaning the bike too much because the uh, last thing I want is to, is to drop it absolute pride and joy so you've been listening to them red lines i hope you found this review helpful if you are in the market to buy one don't be uh, put off that it's an older generation it's still a very capable bike with lots of technology on it and if you are concerned about the power difference then go spend i don't know 1500 quid on adding the extras to get the power up to uh, a level which is uh, going to make you happy and uh, you know in line with a lot of the modern superbikes so thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.